Hi everybody, it's James with Crypto Conscious, and today we're going to look at a new airdrop on the Cosmos. This airdrop is called Magna Carta. Now, I bet you are wondering what the Magna Carta actually is. Well, giving you a brief history lesson, the Magna Carta actually looks like this, and our good friend Google can explain it way better than I ever could. It was issued in June 1215, and it sought to prevent the king from exploiting his power and place limits on the royal authority. Now, we're going to get into that in a bit and why they want to fork Gravity Bridge. So it is a little bit different today. We're going to look at their social following, who eligible, when snapshot, and when airdrop, bro. Current tokenomic data that we have, their general plan, including a brief and important history of Gravity Bridge. And then my final thoughts with some questions for you. So let's get bloody into it. Social following. It appears Magna Carta only has Twitter right now. They've only been around one month, but they have managed to amass nearly 2,000 followers. Not bad. Their picture is very artistic. Quite like it. Moving forward. I'm afraid I'm only able to answer one question out of the important three. And that question is, who eligible, bro? Even that one's a tough one to answer right now, but they claim to be giving 90% of the Magna Carta to the cosmos. If I was a gambling man, which I am, I would assume that the three horses, Atom, Juno, and Osmo, are keys to this. But again, just an assumption could be completely wrong. Right now, that's about it for tokenomics. They want to be completely decentralized and community driven. We're in the truly early stages, and the main point about this paper is they want to fork the Gravity Bridge. What we really need to do is understand why. So forking essentially means they're going to copy the code and run it separately. And to determine why, first I need to explain what Gravity Bridge is, how it works, and their tokenomics. And then we'll get into why Magna Carta came into existence. So... Gravity Bridge's Twitter has been around for six months and they have 13.2 thousand followers. They have not put a link to their Twitter and Discord on here. Now this Gravity Bridge has been developed by Althea with a small development team, is an evolution of the Peggy Bridge and is basically going to be used to transfer assets from Ethereum to the Cosmos and Cosmos to Ethereum. Their token is known as Graviton and currently inflation is at 14.4% a year with only 32% of tokens bonded. So if you staked your tokens, you would receive around 40% extra a year. Currently, Minscant does not reveal a price for these tokens. They have a very simple design for their bridge where you connect both wallets your MetaMask and your Kepler, you select the token to transfer and then you transfer across. Basically, the infrastructure works like this. Validators on the Cosmos have an Ethereum node, so they're able to read transactions that are going on with Ethereum. So what happens is if you want to deposit your Ethereum USDC to the Cosmos, that USDC would firstly get locked in a smart contract on the Ethereum network. Validators on both sides will be able to recognize this and then a canonical version of the USDC will be created on the Cosmos. It's a lot more simple than it looks. So basically, your tokens on Ethereum get locked in a smart contract where they can't be touched and then a version of that USDC is created on the Cosmos, basically. So why are people so annoyed that they want to fork this project and then distribute it to the community? Well, there are claims that the original company went rogue. So apparently it was supposed to be a Cosmos hub native feature, decentralized, and there was going to be a great one-to-one -one airdrop for Atom stakers. It is also claimed that Atom holders funded it. However, the Cosmos blog claims Gravity Bridge did not receive funding from the Cosmos Hub proposal and was built and funded primarily by Althea. But it does admit there is support from the Interchain Foundation. And this is where I think the community issues begin. So the Interchain Foundation promote open and decentralized platforms on the Cosmos. They've had their hand in funding a lot of Cosmos projects. The most recent ones being here, Region, Agoric, Confio. The Gravity Bridge is one of these projects. Okay, so just remember that word decentralized because it's important now. This is a crux about why people are so annoyed. Yes, they have a massive amount of distribution for the community pool, but look at this. The early supporters, the development team, the foundation. It is strongly pointed out that this community pool can be completely controlled by the development team, owning over 40% of the total distribution. And the airdrop was obviously considerably less than what a lot of people thought it would be. So the bold statements are that it's not decentralized. Not only this, they decided to make it their own sovereign entity on the Cosmos, which frustrated some people because they thought it was going to be more involved with Atom. So as they received the ICF grant, some people are claiming they went rogue and it's actually not decentralized as it should have been. Therefore, this brings about the Magna Carta. So what do they say? They're doing something very naughty. Or is it naughty? They're going to fork it. They're just going to copy the code and run their own separate entity. This is what they claim about Gravity Bridge. They've taken a major share of the voting power, and this is seen as an outright attack on the community that helped fund it. Also, custody of the bridge is under traditional legal institutions. If it was truly smart contract based and having a mass distribution among token holders, it would be very hard to pin down. DAOs are very hard to pin down because they're not tied to countries or people. The code runs itself, and everybody has a small percentage of ownership. So there's no major entity control the decisions. They're authoritarian and essentially it's claimed they ignored the community. So this is what they're saying. We've warned them, we've reminded them, we've appealed and our cries have fallen on deaf ears. So therefore, a poetic black paper has been written and this is what they're going to do. They're going to fork it and 90% is going to be distributed to the community. Voting power will be distributed and basically the people deserve it. The cool thing is at the bottom, if you wanted to, you can sign this like the original Magna Carta. That's pretty cool. So this is where we're at. Now, my final thoughts on the situation. Two things. Firstly, they are forking a piece of code that took a lot of human resources, a lot of time, and a lot of money to make. Is that okay? Do you agree with that? Forking or copying code in this way 
actually could lead to amazing innovation. If there's many copies of the same code, people will innovate and change it and add improvements to it. But what about intellectual property? Is that even a thing in the crypto space? What do you think? Should it not be allowed to be forked? Should the original creators have the rights to it? For me, I find this quite difficult because I love innovation. As we know about the iPhone, originally that was copied in many ways by different firms, but now that's been innovated upon. Whereas the smartphone touchscreen technology remains similar, there have been lots of hardware advances and software advances that we all enjoy today. So it does breed innovation in a positive way and innovation is absolutely the future. So where do you stand on that? Secondly, community ownership. Is it really important? What's wrong with the initial angel investors, business experts, and the core team having a high percentage ownership of the tokens of a project? Of course, that encourages them to work harder and make a success of it, but also it implies strong leadership. And strong leadership means setting goals and accomplishing them. So actually having a leader is not always a bad thing. But what about the other side of the coin? Freedom and decentralization. This should be community driven. It was partially funded by these guys. According to many, they represent the community and therefore the community should decide the advancements of the project. So in this context, guys, where do you stand on this? It looks like there's gonna be quite a few bridges out there. And my key concern with the Magna Carta is, I hope they will be able to maintain and keep the bridge secure. Even if that goes in completely different directions with the gravity bridge, we have seen a few bridge hacks recently. What we've also seen when there's large investor ownership is these bridges actually refund people that were hacked. If this is a community driven project that doesn't develop as fast as the one that's investor owned and gets hacked, will the people that lost their assets have the same protections of an organization where a team own a large percentage of the tokens? That's a very important question as we know many bridges have been hacked. Anyway, very, very interesting project, very interesting circumstances for it to come up. And I'm opening the floor to you. What do you think? What is right? What is wrong? Anyway, exciting times on the cosmos. Want to get more information about the airdrop? I'll fill you in. All right, it's me, James from Conscious. Hope you all have a good day and I'll see you again.